Hey YouTube, Casey Classy7 here back here with another video. Got some NBA 2K16 here. I wanted to take some time to go through the um to go through the settings because I feel like this is one of the most important things that people overlook. Before I get started on that, I definitely wanted to talk about something I would like to see added into 2K17 and beyond, or maybe it could even be added into this year. And that is the main menu. I want this to be a priority kind of thing. So one of the things that, one of the, um, what's the word? One of the features that I've been using a lot more this year than ever is the practice um, is the freestyle scrimmage and practice plays. I'd love to see these be on my front menu because I'm using them. Um, I'm using them more. Kind of like how you see on YouTube. If you watch a certain person, you'll start to see their their suggestion um, videos. Have that add that feature in the 2K. Uh, my team is something that I haven't touched too much this year. So bump that off of my front menu and put you know uh, practice plays or put the put that option in its place depending on how much I use it. Uh, that's just a suggestion. Uh, I think it would be a pretty cool thing to add into the game to have your front menu be a priority menu or have us have the option to set this menu. Um, something small but something that definitely will be appreciated by the people who um, will take time out to use it and the people who play this game. So let's get into the bulk of this video. I've tried to make this video a few times, but it's just ran on way too long. Um, partly because um, this is a very important topic that people do not discuss. or I won't say that they don't discuss it, but I feel people do not take the time out to look into this. And that is going through your settings. Gameplay, um, coach, and controller settings. I want to start in the controller settings because I feel like this is the most important one that is overlooked i won't say it's the most important but it's definitely um probably the one that is overlooked the most and i just put this up to 100 but i usually have this on zero your controller settings the one i want to definitely discuss is your defensive assist strength and what this is pretty much it is how much the ai is going to help you when playing defense when it's on 100, they're going to help you a lot. When it's on zero, they're not going to help you at all. I like to play with it on zero. Reason being is whenever I um, am on the stick or whenever I'm using my controller, I want to have full control of what's going on. Like I don't want to be in a situation where my um, where the game puts me in a defensive stance, but I don't want to be in one and the computer ends up blowing by me. If I get If someone blows by me, I want it to be my fault like okay i wasn't in my defensive stance too long i wasn't in my defensive stance long enough let me make that option i don't want to have the computer um determining it for me but at the same time i feel like it's a lot easier to stay in front of defenders when um i won't say it's a lot easier but i feel like when you're getting used to it it's a lot easier for um for you to stay in front of defenders i think it naturally starts on 50 but um, once again, it's just more of a preference thing on and how you want to play defense With it being on zero. I definitely believe that it's a lot easier to play the passing lanes because you know your, your player isn't um, In that defensive stance you're you're controlling when and when he's not in a defensive stance So once again, it's all a preference thing, you know, and it just if, because it's on a hundred You're not gonna become a better defender you still have to learn the game's mechanics and learn how to play defense on ball because it's on zero you're not going to be a better defender once again it's all a preference thing and how you like to play the game same thing with the defensive box defense or box out assist strength sorry um i just have it on zero to me i always hold down l2 anyway when i'm grabbing rebounds so i don't think it would have really mattered what it was on because it's so natural for me to hold down um, L2 when I'm back, when I'm grabbing rebounds, so that really doesn't matter. Shot contest is another big one. I have it on manual because same thing. I want to um, 
I want to make a decision how I want to contest shots. With it being on intense D, the game's naturally going to always hold down L2 for you whenever a shot goes up. So with it holding on L2, I think that means the game is just going to um, take a step into the person shooting the ball. They're not going to put their hand up, but it's just going to be that presence of you being there. With it being on always, the game's always going to put a hand up. The reason why I, I used to play with it on always, the reason why I took it off always is because um, I guess the best example is you're in good defensive position. Like, so they like, so when talking about 2K16, it'll be you're in that yellow range, and um, the game would put their hand up in that situation. With intense D, the defense you're gonna be you're going to when you're in that yellow range it's going to put you into that green range if you are thinking about 2k16 this year and how the red yellow and green works so with it being on always you're just putting your hand up but you're still going to be in that yellow range when you are on intense defense it's going to put you into that next color range so if you're in red you're going to be put into the yellow when the shot goes up. When you're in yellow, you're going to be put into the green when shot goes up. With both of these, shots can still go in. And that was my biggest problem. So I would be, too, with this, I felt like I would be too far out of range to contest shots. So he would put his hand up, but he'd be too far away. Here, he would put himself into a situation where it's a better shot contest, but shots can still go in that way this way on manual um i can do both if i'm too far away i can hit the intensity and i can um also put my hand up i feel like that's the best way to do it but at the same time it's going to, it takes practice and it's going to take you actually going into practice mode putting your game on a lower difficulty and learning the, me the mechanics and learning how to um work with work with the controller um, in a way that you are most comfortable coach settings another thing that is once again all preference thing I switched everything to manual reason being is um, I'll just try to make this as brief as possible with timeouts the game the game calls timeouts like it is a 12 minute like it's a 12 minute game so when you are playing your uh, quick matches online the game always called timeouts around two three minutes in the game um, in the quarter I should have said not in the game but in the quarter so to put it in perspective I would be a if you're ever in a situation where you want to call a timeout around the 350 mark the game might also a manual time I'm talking about but the game might also call another timeout um, around the three minute mark so you pretty much you've wasted your timeout being called so with it being on manual you don't have to worry about that same thing with substitutions if a player is getting hot the game would sub them out if it's on rotation fatigue um, the reason why I don't like it on fatigue is um, the game might keep players in longer or not as long as you want so um, Pretty much, I think it's going to be more longer. They're going to keep them in longer because they're going to keep them in um, to the point to where they're not effective, or the they, the game can realize they're not being as effective as they once were. So, so I think that with it being on fatigue, it's going to be once once your fatigue hits a certain number, they're going to come out. Whether it being a rotation, it's going to be packet substitutions. And I once again, I don't want to deal with that. I'll make my substitutions when I make them. The biggest thing in here is, is going to be your play vision and your play calling messages. Always, you always want to, I want to, you always want to, but when you're learning how to run plays and learning your freelance offenses, you always want to have all these on. The way that they're set before is it's going to be on user plays only. So th these are the plays that you call and it's, this is going to be set to light. The reason why I like it on full is you get to see all your options and all your pass options and where you can initiate your offense from. And with this being on all, this allows you to see your freelance offenses. Play calling messages. This is something that I just recently turned on. I didn't realize how important it was. Um, the reason why this is so important is because 
it's more because of defensive end. So if you switch into two three zone, every time you um, get back on defense, you're always going to see what defense you're in. So there would be situations probably where I would be in two three zone, not knowing I was in two three zone, and I was giving up open shots. So this is always going to be a reminder of what defense that you're in. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the gameplay settings. The most important one I feel like in here, they're all important. You have to go through and put it on which one that you're most comfortable with. But the most important one to me is the shot meter. One of one complaint that people usually talk about is, you know, my shots aren't going in or I got it real close to that, but my shots still aren't going in. To me, maybe it's a psychological thing, but I don't like seeing the actual meter go up because I have a tendency to look at that meter instead of looking at the feet, elbow, and wrist of my player. So that's why I just have the feedback only. This shows you where you actually stop the notch at, how close to that, um, to the middle were you, um, or how far away you from the um, from that notch you were. So that's why I just like having the feedback, um, feedback only, shot feedback talks about or is about um the quality of shot it is and how and whether it was a slightly early slightly late um very early very late release or perfect for that matter um so the difference between these two this shows you how slightly early slightly late the shot was this shows you that the shot was slightly early slightly late and the quality of shot it is um i feel like this is um very important once again when you're learning sh your shot timings and your players to have these on so you know um was that actually a good shot that i took or did i think that this was a good shot and it in actuality is a bad shot so this is just um a very very not quick but i tried to make this video as quick as possible um talking about these settings and you have to have to have to go through and look through these um if you are having problems with something because more times than not um, rather than it being 2k's problem it's probably something that you can fix yourself um, I definitely would recommend going through these settings um, seeing which ones you're comfortable with because um, ultimately that's most important you have to find a setting that is going to be most comfortable to you you don't want to just have it the way it is because you're not actually experiencing the game that uh 2k wants you to experience it experience it so once again go through these settings it's very 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 important um when talking about this game because ultimately you want the game to play most comfortable to you the 2k just doesn't put all these settings into the game you know for them to go to waste go through your settings very important i know this game this video ran very long kc classic 7 signing out